Good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the vlog. A couple of things going on this morning and one of them is making some little fittings for the lids of the five conical fermenters we'll call them. So when I'm cleaning these fermenters there tends to be a little bit of the cleaning solution leaks out the side because there's a positive pressure inside the tank and they don't seal that well so I need to eliminate that to prevent the cleaning fluid running down the side of the tank so thinking about making some little fittings threaded bar through there it can swivel out of the way to take the lid off and they can swivel back in the way to clamp the lid down by just tightening a wing nut on the threaded bar to, you know, secure the lid down. That's one job. We leapfrog. We leapfrog to the left. You'll see we have a selection of these Proteus Gaia MCBs. So this is to upgrade, if you like, the circuit board to the brewery. Now it's not really an upgrade, more of a return to how it should be. So it's obviously been used and modified over the years and everybody who's been and worked on that panel have just put any old MCB in there. I'm going to change them all out so they're all the right model for the board. It's a Proteus Gaia board, so we're going to switch them out at some point. Probably not today, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Here are some stainless steel bolts and some stainless steel wing nuts for the previous job, you know, bolting the lids down, and also some stainless steel M10 threaded bar, five meters of such. Again, for the same job. So there'll be a little bit of welding to, to be done today and then also some of these stainless steel bolts are going to double up nuts, they're not bolts, nuts, these are going to double up as anchors for the dip tubes in the beers. Say hello to the mango, yeah so this one has fermented out very well indeed and there is the dip tube and everyone keeps screaming at me on the YouTube comments to change the way this dip tube works well there's the float and there's the tube look submerged but they're saying that that will suck in CO2 so I don't see how when it's that far underneath the liquid level but maybe I'm missing something so we'll see how we get on but if it doesn't work we'll pop the lid and we'll stick a little nut on that stainless steel nut to hold the whole thing under water so as evidenced by this little bit of wire this is filler rod stainless steel 316 I've already been on top of the tanks and we have the nuts in place for the lid tie downs. Something similar on this tank, these are the tanks that I fabricated from scratch and these have full blown square lid type things that sit on top and they got bolted down and that puts pressure across the whole area of the lid but I think it's a bit of overkill particularly for these tanks which have return on them so they've definitely got a little bit they're a bit more rigid around the edges because of this angle basically whereas these are flat sheet so they could bow out of shape if they weren't clamped in all four corners and across so I'm hoping that just the bolt a clamping arm and a wing nut will do the job oh and also while we're here also while we're here can have a look at the tilt Working a treat, isn't it? 
Oh, I've just lent across this fermenter and I've got a beautiful whiff of the beer that's inside this tank. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, well, if these tanks are leaking when you're cleaning them, then surely they're leaking when they've got beer in them. You know, they're permeable to air. And yes, they are to an extent, but in order to maintain CO2 in the headspace, A, we've got a lid on, so the natural exchange of the atmosphere is limited. You know, you put a lid, even loosely fitted, or let's say you get a glass of water, if you leave a glass of water out on the windowsill, over time it'll evaporate, that's because the gases are exchanging, and if you put a beer mat on top of that glass, it won't evaporate, that's because the gases can't exchange. So just simply the matter of putting the lid on maintains CO2 in the tank, but you will still get gas exchange around the periphery, but to a much lesser extent. So to combat that, we have a regulator set up here with CO2 coming into it and this runs off to every single tank that we've got. And this is also connected up to a solenoid valve which is in turn powered by a timer which is set to come on for 10 seconds every kind of 5 or 6 hours. Therefore, every 5 or 6 hours each one of these tanks gets a CO2 top up therefore eliminating a little bit of gas from the headspace and providing a positive pressure inside to prevent or reduce that oxygen ingress. Does that make sense? I hope so. It seems to work. It's definitely a better solution than nothing at all. And of course if we just go ahead and we could put this top back on these will clamp it down so we can get a pressure in these tanks of about half a PSI but any more than that and these neoprene seals start to fail or blow out you can see this the edge of one here look if you can see that so that would be a failure point for the gas to leak so we're constantly pumping pressure in but other than that these little beauties have held up for two or three years now already and I'm happy how they work, so applying the same principle to these tanks because sealing these was quite an issue because there's nowhere for me to put a neoprene seal because it's a sharp edge, this top of the tank. But I'm sure you, uh, you follow along with me and yeah, well I'm standing here and I can smell, I can smell a little bit of hoppiness. So that means that this system's working because it's, it's eliminating a little bit of gas from each tank. So I've cut some things out of the way. Cut some little bits of threaded bar, and also we've got some stainless steel nuts for the end. So I'm just gonna weld these little beauties together. So I'm making a bolt, basically. I I couldn't get any stainless steel bolts locally, um, so I'm just mocking some up basically. And then we're going to put the wing nut up to the edge of the bolt, the nut there, and then the, the piece of bar that's going to sit on top of the tank there, and then that should be able to be screwed in to the top of the nut that I've already welded onto the kind of outskirts of the lid. And then by tightening the wing nut, we should be able to clamp the lid down. So I'll turn some gas on. It's a bit of argon. I'll have a look what we're set at. Uh, 80 amps. Probably overkill, but I'll just rein it back a touch on the foot pedal. No bother. Near bother, lad. Near bother. And then we'll just... Grab our torch. I could probably get away with standing these on end like that. And that's all there is to it. These don't have to be, you know, 
welded on so they never come back off again. Just tacked, it's more than enough. I'll just run through this pack. Well, I'll do four first. I'll do four and then we'll take them over to the tanks. Hello. And we'll check. We'll check that they fit. Just holding the tick torch there whilst the post flow argon continues to come out of the end and that just prevents that prevents the weld oxidizing in the air until it's cooled enough for that not to be a problem. Go. So that's three done. With the welder that I've got, you can set the post flow argon to however long or short you like. Probably not really necessary on this occasion, but I've got it set to about six seconds, so may as well use it. Two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there we go, about six seconds. So let's go and have a look then. If these do indeed fit. So this is the setup we're gonna go for. We've got the little bolt that we've made, a wing nut, and then the uh, square bar, the box, and then another nut on the top just to retain it and the reason I've gone for the box is because it provides it's a little bit more rigid than using flat bar so just using the nut on the top we can screw it in place until it bottoms out on there and then got some flexibility look so we can take the lid off or we can remove the whole thing and then we're just gonna one two. That's solid. And then if I zoom out, you can see we can do the same thing on the other side. We'll get in there. So this beer's actually got the coconut shine in it at the minute. And then we'll just tighten this up. One, two, oh, I can physically see the lid going down there. There we go, that looks nice and solid, that lid is now locked in place, I think that's going to work, so I'll pop these two on the other side and that's one tank ready to go. Right, they all fit, so we may as well weld the rest of them up, so I love doing little things like this, get all your ducks in a row and let's have a go.
that went well, didn't it? Is that going to make for a good thumbnail? Maybe that is. <laughs> Stop pratting around, lad. Let's get some proper work done. Casking day today, or kegging day, as it would seem. Here you can see they're all lined up, so that's proof of concept going into that. Yummy, yummy. Wow. She's still fermenting this raspberry Philly sour. So, I've taken another sample off. Simply for a pH reading. Nothing else. Would you look at the colour of that, though? Looks fantastic. I'll just let that pressure off now, actually. So I don't need it. There we go. That looks wonderful. Wonderful and red. And the pH is at just above three. The aroma is outstanding. It's a little bit like, if you've ever had it, the Delirium Red. Oh full of fruit, you can smell that sourness on it. Mmm, that's definitely got a bite. The beer really takes a back seat to the raspberries on this, but it's definitely there in the background. The body is relatively uh, light, even though it's, I've not taken a gravity reading, but the tilt stay in this is still at 1022. I'm inclined to think that maybe the tilt is stuck under the takeoff pipe or something because it tastes a lot drier than that. But I'm going to drink all this sample after letting Gemma try it, of course. But wow. Mmm. It is outstanding. Well done, me. We've just had a malt delivery from. Total Brewing Supplies, guys I use for my Muntons malt. This is some of the specialty stuff I've yet to chuck on the on the side. And uh, Ken and Gary, who run the place, oh, they sent me some t-shirts, look. Trouble is, they're enlarged, so they won't fit. And also, a little timer. So, like, uh, when I'm in the middle of a brew day, and I've got 45 minutes to wait, or whatever, for something, I can go and uh, have a pint and wait till my alarm goes off and then I can come back in and sort it out. Anyway, it's probably not going to be loud enough. But it's the thought that counts, isn't it? That was nice of them. Always nice to get freebies. So yeah, grain weighed out for tomorrow's brew day. The mash tun, well actually, let's do it the right way round, boys. There's the grain for tomorrow's brew day. That's for Wednesday's brew day. And then this is for the rest of the week. Maybe the month, we'll see. But I'll get through that in no time at all. Now we're starting to see the cogs of the economy turning again, which isn't a bad thing. I'm going to leave these for another day, just to do their thing, just in case there's a little bit more bubbling to be done. I don't mind if the lager drops a little bit more. I don't really want the mango sorbet to drop anymore. I think it's probably as low as I need it to be. The raspberry Philly sour again. I'd be quite happy if that stayed where it was. It tastes fantastic. I've also been up here this afternoon and uh, just done a few little bits, put the fire blanket on the wall and then been over in Matt's little corner where he likes to handle meat on a daily basis and we put a hand soap dispenser on the wall and a dispenser for tissues. Of course he's going to need that and then everybody's meat over here is going to need some tissues, that's for sure. So I think that's about it, boys and girls. It's Monday. Stuart's just showing a new uh, member of the bar, bar team around, and uh, I think I'd better bugger off home so I don't get under anybody's feet as we're about to open up. And well, I'm just waiting for tomorrow morning's brew day now, so go home, get myself well rested, try and avoid getting a hangover because I'll probably have a pint. We'll see.